Today we're going through a topic that I've been asked for a few times by a few different people uh, and that's the aerodynamics of motorbike winglets. I've done a video before about the aerodynamics of motorbikes on the whiteboard but today I've run a few quick CFDs and we're going to go through and have a look a bit at the results around what's happening with these winglets on a motorbike. For full disclosure, this is a generic CFD on a generic bike model taken from the Open Foam motorbike tutorial. It's a relatively coarse CFD mesh on it, so there is some jigsawing that you'll see on the surfaces in here, but it is more than ample for the purposes of explaining the mechanisms that are going on and getting some basic numbers for these devices. I wanted to get a good spread and a good understanding uh, for how these are working. So I've run a few different cases. I've run a baseline case with no winglets, a case with uh, winglets on, uh, then a case with winglets cranked. All three of those are in a straight line. And then I've also done a check with the, the motorbike lint over in a cornering condition. Uh, it's worth noting I haven't changed the rider shapes. So the rider still tucked in, the knees not down or anything like that. Uh, but it should still give us a pretty good indication of what's going on. So let's get into the results a little bit. In terms of downforce numbers, I've chucked them into one of the old simulator spreadsheets uh, just so we can see a little bit of the difference in what's going on. Now, the numbers uh, in terms of coefficients were pretty small. Uh, we're talking only about six points difference in terms of downforce, so that's 0 0.06 of a change uh, in terms of total downforce, but it was equally distributed between front and rear. It wasn't just front downforce we were getting, it was rear downforce as well. And we'll talk about the flow mechanics behind that a little bit later. That sounds like a very small number, but you got to think about the fact that a motorbike is quite a light vehicle. Uh, and generally speaking, they tend to reach high speeds down the straights. Uh, I modeled these particular winglets off Kawasaki H2R and that wouldn't struggle to hit 300 k's an hour at a reasonable circuit. Uh, so we've got to look at the low weight and the high speeds and have a look at what happens there. So I've put in 300 kilograms for the motorbike um, with those aero numbers in terms of difference. And what we end up with is at about 160 k's an hour uh, we've got around seven kilos of total downforce increase on the bike, which again, sounds small, but it's actually not too bad. Uh, at 240 k's an hour or 150 miles an hour, uh, we have uh, closer to uh, 16 kilos or so, or about 37 pounds. Um, so that's, that's actually now starting to get quite reasonable. If we look at the G-forces as it starts to go up, we can see that around 300 kilometers an hour, we're actually cornering at about 0.13 G more than when we started with. This is assuming a, a tire coefficient of friction of 1.5, which I think is about ballpark for a, for a slick on a motorbike. Um, but the, the key thing is, is that that's not an insignificant increase in ability to corner. And well, these particular numbers that I'm quoting now were actually taken uh, in the straight line case. So in this case, we're talking acceleration and braking. Uh, we're gonna see some decent improvements in terms of that. Um, so it's worth noting we are getting a performance benefit. It isn't enormous, uh, but it's decent. The other component that's worth looking at here as well is also the overall drag. Uh, now that went up by about 2.3 points, so 0 0.023 is the coefficient that that went up. Um, and those sort of numbers to give you an idea is that around 240 k's an hour, uh, we've got about six kilos or so of drag going on there. Uh, so we've got a fairly efficient lift to drag ratio going on here. It's, it's a little bit under three to one, which is not bad. Um, but it's worth noting that that is still a notable increase in drag and will have some degree of impact on your top speed. So looking at the overall flow differences on the surface flows for the two different cases, we can see a, a few little things that are appearing. Uh, on the left, we have the bike with no winglets. and On the right, we have the bike with winglets. Um, if we have a, a close look in, you'll see that the, the cooling for this particular bike is blocked off, so not quite a real world representation, uh, but we can still, like I said earlier, even though it's a simplified model, deduce some things that would be happening in the real world. Now the key things that I just want to point out is that obviously on the winglets themselves, we do have a, a bit of downforce being produced locally by these winglets because we're getting suction uh, below the winglet itself. So when we get that suction below the winglet, uh, we're going to get some downforce on there. We've got uh, some pressure on the top of it as well. So we've got a pressure differential. So the winglet, as expected, is generating some downforce. Uh, as we move further back along the bike, uh, one thing that I just want to highlight is, is that we can see there's more suction occurring around the, the rider's leg and more suction occurring 
on the cooling axis. So this is largely from the vortices that are cast off the tip of the end plate, uh, particularly the upper tip of the end plate. And what we can deduce from this is that because we have more suction over where the exit of the cooling vent on this particular bike would be, we would have improved cooling. We've got an improved exit condition for the radiator, so we'll have better cooling flows through there. Um, and then this suction around the leg, well, we'll have a look in the, the slice along the flow later, but that could potentially be positive or negative for downforce. Um, it looks like it's very much on the side, so I'm not 100% sure what it, that would be just from looking at that. And then further rearward, we have a bit of a pressure redistribution. And we're gonna to have to have a look a bit at the off-body flows to see what's going on here. So what we're now gonna look at is uh, an X movie of the, the flow along the bike. Uh, so if you can imagine we have a plane that is going in the direction of the flow and we're going to look at slices as we go down there. So we'll be looking at the velocity distribution around the bike and we'll also be looking at the suction distribution around the bike. This is that velocity distribution movie that I was talking about and you can see that this is just a quick sweep so that you can get a feel for what it's looking like. And now we can actually talk about it. If we have a look around the winglets, we can see that below the winglets, we're, we're getting some accelerated flow, some faster flow. Uh, it's getting slowed down the top of winglets, as you'd expect. Uh, and then we're getting some vortices along here. So nothing too fancy there. If we have a look at a comparison to baseline, if I flick between the two of them, you can see that's the prime difference here. And what's far more interesting is as we move further downstream on the wingleted case, is that we end up with quite a different velocity distribution around the top edge of the seat. So if we have a look here, this being the no wingleted case and this being the wingleted case, you can see where those vortices are. And if I just switch to a vorticity view, we can see vortices there, no vortices there. If we have a look at those vortices there and we look at the, the flow that's going up and around and through to the back of the bike, we can see that we have quite a lot more high energy flow on the top, red being a faster moving flow and blue move, being a slower moving flow, we can see that we've, we're feeding a lot of this air from underneath that would normally go underneath the seat is actually being dragged around and over to the top of the seat. As we go further downstream, you can see that we've got quite a different flow shape. Now, because we've been up washing the, the air alongside the bike with this rotation of these vortices, so we've been kicking that air up around the bike, um, what we've been doing is we've essentially been up washing this whole area. We've been improving the, the flow quality to the underside of, of the rear portion of the seat. Uh, so we've got much better flow coming through there and we have better flow over the top of the seat. Now, given the seat is angled somewhat up, we can therefore deduce that that's probably where a lot of our downforce is coming from. If we go further upstream, we can see we've got that, that very different weight shape again. And the whole rear seat is acting like a wing for us. By using those vortices, we've significantly improved the performance and that's where we're getting the rear downforce. So if I have a look at the, uh, the pressure distribution here, we can see I have suction at the wings, suction at the vortices, improved suction at the cooling exit, as we talked about earlier, more suction around the legs, as we talked about earlier, a lot of it being induced by that vortex there. And then we go further downstream and then around here, and I know we're getting a bit faint there, but we can see that the, the higher quality flow on the top has increased the pressure on the top of the seat. And we also have the induced suction of, of the vortices on the bottom of the seat. Now, I'm sorry that this is such a poor contrast here. Normally I work with things that have a little bit more suction overall. So my standard movie output uh, is designed to, to show more suction better. So this is a little bit faint. I apologize for that. So we know that in a straight line, that these winglets are producing downforce on both the front and the rear. Uh, but what are they doing in a corner? Because this is an interesting scenario to think about because obviously one side's getting more into ground effect, the other side's getting further up. We've also got the bike at an angle as I discussed in my previous video on the subject. Uh, so we need to consider the force components there. What I'm mainly gonna be looking at though is the outright downforce uh, and what that does overall. The cornering results are actually quite interesting. I spoke about when we were in the straight line case, how we had around six points of downforce, give or take. And if you lent that over, so move that force vector over to a 45 degree angle, which is the angle that I've put the bike at, you would anticipate that your downforce that stayed about the same would be around the four point mark, a little bit over. But what actually happened was the downforce dropped to around the three point mark. So it's interesting to go through and have a look and see why that is the case. So I've readjusted the scales on the pressure plot so that you'll be able to see better what's going on than you could in the straight line case. Uh, we'll just quickly sweep through the velocities and then talk the pressures. 
we can see that when we look at the fronts, we've got the same sort of patterns in terms of increased velocity around the winglets. We go downstream, everything's behaving more or less as before. We're getting that velocity shaft up there. If we compare to the case without winglets, you can see that we've moved the velocity distribution from down the bottom to up the top. And we can see that, that that's gonna more or less have the same sort of effects as it did before. But when we go and have a look at the pressures, which are on this new scale so you can see it better, it's all a little bit of a different story. If we look at the back of the seat, we can see that it, our winglets, as per before, added pressure to the top of the seat, uh, so we improved the downforce there. But what you'll notice is that the baseline case actually gets a lot more suction around the leg, around here, which is now close to the ground, it has a downwards vector. Um, and then also as we move up, it also gets a bit more suction around the base of the seat on the seat surface. Now, why is this the case? Why is it not quite behaving the same as it did when it was vertical? Well, a lot of it comes down to the biasing of, of where we put the velocity. Now, we, we moved our good, clean quality flow up when we added the vortices, we moved it up to there. Uh, but when the bikes land over, that's somewhat less advantageous. When it's going down, we can see that what we get is we get this nice, clean jet of flow around the leg itself there, and that's what gives us our extra leg suction there. Uh, and our, because everything down the bottom is more in ground effect, uh, we're getting rewarded a little bit more for that than we are up top. So this redistribution of velocity is not quite as beneficial as it was when the bike was upright. Now it's important to note that we are still seeing a downforce improvement. So overall we are up with the winglets on, both in front and rear downforce, but we have lost a bit of efficiency. And the main reason is just because of how things are changing with proximity to the ground and how the ground effect is working with respect to where we've redistributed our velocities. Then just a super quick note on the comparison between the cranked winglets and the non-cranked winglets. You can see here that these are the cranked winglets, these are the non-cranked winglets. So you see it's basically just doing more of the same. As we go further downstream, we just see the same effects, just a little bit stronger in terms of what's going on, in terms of suction and stuff like that. And we're, we're still getting the same things in terms of getting the flow fed to the top and up washing the overall wake at the rear, um, we're just seeing larger magnitudes. So as a result, what we saw is basically the same downforce and drag numbers, but just 50% bigger on both. Well, that's all for the CFD analysis. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more. Hit the notification bell to get the latest updates on my channel and leave a comment below if you have any video suggestions. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.